everybody and welcome to another edition of a chapter a day keeps the doctor away my name is alan otherwise known as Hisui, and i'm from reversethieves.com as well as the speak easy podcast and this time we're looking at one piece chapter 735 fuji tora's intentions and i was totally wrong i'll admit it i thought they were going to focus uh, either on robin and usap or on the crew back on the ship but uh actually neither of them really get any camera time both of them are mentioned offhandedly but uh this pretty much jumps to everybody else and so first off is rebecca coming back and getting a little congratulations for her win in the coliseum um the character who is 99% Sabo, or at least we think is 99% Sabo, also gives her a big congratulations. Was like, but you're not going to have the devil fruit. I'm not going to let you win. And man, they go through this whole chapter going out of their way to really make sure that they never show this character's face. Like anytime you see him, you only just see the Lucy disguise but you don't see his face because there's it's like either from the wrong camera angle or there's a word bubble over his head or like a million other things. But Oda seems really insistent on not showing this character's face. I mean, the way that he mentions Ace at the end of the chapter and the way he talks about the country he grew up in... And everything else, you're like, it's Sabo, it's Sabo. But Oda, I think, A, kind of wants you to maybe think it might be somebody else that he's pulling a bait and switch and you think it's Sabo, but it's, I don't know, like, Garp. And the other thing is, I mean, even when they had that one chapter of, it was like, what if Ace... Luffy and Sabo had all grown up together. They, Oda goes out of his way not to show you what Sabo looks like. And I mean, we haven't seen Sabo since he was a little kid. So that's all the time from when he was a little kid to when the manga starts. And then from when the manga starts to the time skip. So kind of like... Kaola, who also we see, we haven't seen this character since they were a little kid. So it might just also just be the suspense of like, what does he look like now? What does he look like now? Although I think it would be kind of mean for it to be somebody other than Sabo. But, uh... oh, and uh, the owner of the Coliseum uh, is also going to be fighting in the thing. So we'll have five enemies in the you know the final match of the Coliseum, but I can't see this non flamingo guy winning. Uh, I can't see Rebecca winning and Bartolomo he's pretty much there to just have an interesting thing to the mix. But if anybody's gonna win this, it's gonna be Burgess or Sabo. I'm thinking Sabo, but we'll see. I mean, he's the only one I could logically see win. Um, I mean, it would be cool if Rebecca won, but... I just can't see it. She's just way too much of a defensive fighter. And... She's probably going to put up a good fight and be awesome, but I don't think she can win this. Um, but after that, um, we go to the palace and um, Viola um, says that she knows a secret elevator that not even Don Flamingo knows about. And they could use that to, you know, basically get pretty far into the castle before anybody would even possibly find them and we get a little clarification of who she is and that she's 
Rebecca's mother's sister and that you know she's always been working against Don Flamingo even though she was in his employ and all of that so not a lot happens there just kind of you know um, if anything the major thing will be that uh, Luffy's going to jump up and bring down the basket and then uh, Zoro and Kinemon are going to ride it up and then uh, Luffy will pop up and join them using his gunbun powers. Although Viola seems a little hesitant to get on. And I'm like, hmm, what is up with that? Is she actually still working for Don Flamingo? Or is that me just reading too much into where they cut and just having her kind of pause for a second? I mean, she might just have to tell them something else or... That could be the sign or something. We'll see. I mean, she seems to have legitimate beef with Don Flamingo and want to help them, but we'll see. We'll see. Uh, past that, it's uh, Frankie and those two Don Flamingo generals. That really weird senior pink. Who's just like the most weirdest gross character. That everybody's like. He's the manliest hard boiled man ever. And all the women are like. He's so good looking. And you're like. My god. He's like a fat tub of lard. And a baby outfit. And like. Everybody interprets his actions. As the coolest actions ever. And you're like. Alright. I guess. And he's like, ah, he took that attack because one of his subordinates was there. And that might actually have actually been a cool thing. So maybe I'm totally reading into it wrong. But man, when that guy just gets all cut up and just throws whiskey in his face, they're like, he's so hard boiled. That was pretty funny. And then the other guy, he just seems to have some like weight control, which kind of reminds me a little bit too much of Miss Valentine's Day but I'm sure he has like some different kind of power but yeah he tries to smash Frankie and Frankie's just a little too quick for him and before they can kind of consolidate their attack a bunch of marines come uh, on Fujimar on Fujitora's uh, orders and so they seem like they're going to just try to catch Frankie. But uh, Don Flamingo's two generals don't seem too happy to see these guys. This might be a three-way battle more than uh, a two-way battle. Or them stepping aside and uh, just letting the Marines take away Frankie. I'm thinking this is going to be a battle royale, as it were. But we'll see what happens. Uh... Which cuts to Don Flamingo thanking Fujimura, Fujitora for um, sending in those Marines and, you know, basically clearing up his Frankie problem, in his opinion. And Fujitora's like, ah, I don't think that I'm really on your side here. Because I realize you're kind of a douche. I mean, we're going to help you out here, but really. I think that the the Ward Lewis of the Sea program has got to go, and you you're eventually gonna go, my friend. Don't don't think that I don't see what's going on here. I might pretend to be blind to your things now, because that's my kind of justice. But uh, you're a douchebag, and they kind of have a little clash, and they're like, "All right, we're not gonna fight for now, but uh, we're both." And so, hmm, Fujitora does kind of seem like one of those Marines that kind of knows the deal, but is still kind of 
in a corrupt system and kind of corrupt themselves. Once again, he's supposed to be Zatotochi, the blind, you know, swordsman. So, you know, that guy wasn't also like 100% white knight. So, I guess that's kind of based on the character he is. But most of the Marines who are still kind of good guys, we still get that like, yeah, you guys could be a little cleaner. You're not gonna be, but you could be. And uh, it ends with once again, mysterious Fighter X entering and being like, Apes, watch me now, which is like it's Sabo. Let's just see what it looks like, man. But uh, still, fun chapter. Uh, a lot of things happening. Uh, not any big movements. Once again, more pieces falling into place. More than any kind of, you know, serious blows. But, you know, there's a lot to build. And you don't want to focus until the real fighting starts. You don't really want to focus on any one story. So I definitely guess I understand why they're doing what they're doing. Um... Once again, I'd kind of like to see what everybody is back doing on the ship. But I wonder if that's the lowest priority right now. So uh, I'm curious, what are we going to focus on? Because I was totally wrong this week, so I'm not going to speculate too much. But uh really want to see who this mysterious fighter is. Or at least if it is Sabo, like everybody assumes it is. And then see what Sabo is like and what his fighting style is like now. Um... Kind of curious what Kaola is going to do. She's such a weird character to bring back. So um, I'm curious what she's doing in this plot. What she's going to do in the Coliseum. Um, she's, Oda doesn't waste the character. So she's definitely there for a reason. I'm kind of curious what she's going to do. Maybe it prevents some cheating. Kind of be like, you know. Mr. Rawl and Gundam Build Fighters and like, you know, stop the mysterious bad guy who's going to, you know, fix the fight outside of the, you know, the arena or outside of the ring it is. Uh, but she's obviously there for a reason. Curious what it is. We shall see. All right. See you guys next time.